Uh, my name is Notemba Kula and I am a management consultant uh, all the way from Johannesburg, South Africa, from the southeastern part, one of the most beautiful parts of South Africa. That's where I'm from. So I was born um, in a town in the southeastern part of South Africa called East London. It's a beautiful coastal town. Um, it's it's a, a tourist destination. You can never go to South Africa and not go to East London. It's very beautiful. Um, my parents were from a township just outside of East London. And a township is a relatively not so well-to-do area. So we were not uh, rich. We didn't have a lot of money. We didn't have uh, much growing up actually. Um, but we had a grandmother who was a domestic worker, and a domestic worker meaning she took care of other people's children, she cleaned other people's homes, and I think um, I learned from a very young age the value of work, the value of hard work, because I saw my grandmother um, spending almost all of her life, you know, taking care of other people's families. Um, and I think that inspired me to study and to better myself so that uh, my family could also, you know, have better opportunities. Um, there are five of us uh, children um, and uh, there's only one brother in the family, the rest of us um, are girls. And um, it was a really lovely uh, experience growing up. Although there was, you know, difficulties because my parents got divorced at some stage. So that was a very difficult episode for us as a family. But once again, I think watching my mother specifically and how she continued to be strong and how, um, in fact, both of my parents, you know, continued to be there for us despite the fact that, you know, the family was no longer together. It really instilled a sense of the importance of family and family values and the importance of staying together as a family as I grew up. The divorce definitely had an impact on me um, as a young uh, child. I was probably in my early teens at the time and it's a very tender age, you know, that's the time when as a young girl you need uh, your parents to be together the most and um, I think it was very difficult for me because I lost a sense of belonging. I think one of the impacts of divorce, especially on young girls, is how you lose the sense of belonging and you are always looking for friends, you are always looking for other groups, other people who are going to accept you because you feel like you don't have something of your own. And I think I would say to those young girls that there is something that, you know, is inside each and every one of us that if you keep your eye on the things you want to achieve, even though you will go through difficult seasons, when you focus on the things you want to achieve in life, you know, somehow you are able to make it, you know. Um, I mean, I did find myself um, with the wrong friends sometimes, uh, doing the wrong things, but I think because of the experiences of my grandmother because of the divorce itself i really wanted to do well so there was a stage in my life where i decided that if i don't get serious then it means that i'm not going to be able to achieve the things that i've set myself to so it's very important to have goals i would say because the goals are the things that draw you and keep you on the path because you know what you have to do in order to achieve those goals. Um, so I went to very good schools, I think from a very early age. Um, and even though the area where I grew up, which was a small township called Mdanzane, just outside of East London, even though that area was not a well-to-do area, but there were very good schools. And I think one of the lessons or tips that I can share uh, with young people and young girls out there is that you must learn to work with what is available. If the school that is available is the one that is down the road because that's what your parents can afford, work with that. That has always been a life principle for me, that it doesn't make sense to complain about 
what school you hoped you had. You must work with the one that you have. So I went to township schools, just like most young black girls at the time, but I was very determined from a very young age. I really was inspired by my mother and my grandmother. I think they suffered so much. Uh, they spent so much time working for other people and not having time for the family because they were trying to make a living for us. So deep down in my heart, I had this desire that I wanted to be better. I wanted to make things easier for those children who would come after me. And so um, I progressed through those township schools and then because of the divorce, we had to move to a different town. And that's the other thing about life, you know, sometimes things don't work out according to plan and you've got to be very flexible. You've got to be very adaptable. You can't have the mindset that says, if plan A doesn't work, then I'm giving up, you know. Most often than not, things don't work out according to the way that you would have originally planned. And it requires that you become flexible and adaptable. So we left Mdanzane and we went to live in Butterworth, which is a small village also in the Eastern Cape. And it was a very difficult transition. It was very difficult to adapt, but um, sometimes you have to do what you have to do. And I think that's what maturity is about. It's about looking at the situation and saying, what does it require of me and doing just that. Sometimes it's not about whether you're happy. It's not about whether it meets your preferences. It's about working with what is available and really appreciating the people who are working so hard. Because I could see my mother, she was working so hard to keep us in school. So I think it would have been disrespectful of me to say, no, just because I'm going to a school I don't like, then I'd rather not study at all. So I progressed with my high school education um, in the small village of Butterworth. It wasn't the best of places. And I think for most young people, they're often looking for the glamorous things. They're often looking for the schools with the big names. But I think it's so important to really honor the opportunities that you are given and make the most of them. And so I went through my high school. I didn't pass that well, I must admit. And I think one of the things I learned through that is you can always build on top of whatever foundation you have laid. You don't have to be an A student. You don't always have to have all of the best grades because from high school, I mean, I, I just managed to pass. I wasn't like an A student or anything. Um, but I think when I went into university, because I went to the University of Fortier, which is basically the university where all of the great leaders in South Africa went to, your Nelson Mandela's, your O.R. Tambos, um, all of the liberation heroes and the struggle heroes, they went to the University of Fortier and that's where I went. And I studied a Bachelor of Science so I did an undergraduate degree in uh, the Bachelor of Sciences and I went on to do an honors degree and I specialized in microbiology. So I graduated with an honors degree in microbiology and I progressed, I actually have three master's degrees. And I think that for me was my way of really being a return on the investment that my mother had made in me from an education point of view. Because from a very young age, both my mother and father had instilled those values of education and being independent, um, you know, both intellectually and also financially. So we were taught from an, an early age the importance of being able to think for yourself, being able to determine your own goals, um, being able to know what opportunities are available to you and how you can um, pursue those opportunities and become the best at whatever you do. And so I ran with that and I did a master's degree in microbiology and then I did a second master's degree in bioinformatics. Um, and I worked as an intern with what we call in South Africa the Medical Research Council of South Africa. So I worked as a scientist um, within the Medical Research Council and I progressed. I came on as a junior scientist and I then was promoted into a senior scientist. So I've got quite a firm grounding in the sciences and it's really a field that I really enjoy and it's just also one thing that's so important for young people and for women um, in general that pick the thing that you really find a sense of fulfillment when you do because I think you tend to excel in the things that you are passionate about and I didn't stop there I then went on to the University of London 
um, and this was shortly after I had gotten married because I got married um, and I have two children now uh, but uh, just shortly after we got married with my husband we went to live in the UK and we both studied and we both worked and I graduated with another master's degree in public health and so I am a public health specialist at the moment and a management consultant and I work with um, the government of South Africa, governments across Southern Africa actually have done some work for them and also I worked with international development organizations such as the World Bank, uh, such as the Department for International Development, even the Southern African Development Community, SADC, which is in Gaborone in Botswana. So I've done a, f a great, great work, you know, in public health um, and I think it's really testament to the importance of picking something, sticking with it, building on top of it and really giving it your all. So stay tuned to more. I am sure that you are ready for more detail and uh, as my story progresses, it's going to get even better. So stay with us, don't go away. We're going to come back and get back into the story to keep you inspired and challenged. My passion is on public health because I did, um, as I said, do a master's degree in public health and went on to become a public health specialist. And what public health essentially is about is making sure that health services are structured in such a way that the people who need them the most are able to access them. So for an example, um, in South Africa, we had an epidemic, still do in some sense, of HIV and AIDS. And the way that the services were structured was such that young people were hesitant to go into clinics, to go into hospitals, to go and get antiretroviral treatment. So we look in public health at things like staff attitudes, we look at things like uh, waiting times, we look at things like the cleanliness of facilities because even though there might be good medication but if there are no supporting uh, there's no supporting infrastructure so that you are able to access those services in the most effective way then it becomes difficult for people to access these services and so public health is really about making sure that the health services that are provided, you know, in public facilities benefit the people who need them the most. So public health is really something that I'm very passionate about because it does make sure that the people who need to get the services, um, that we tailor the services to suit them. I've done work um, for mothers and babies, uh, maternal and child health, very passionate about maternal and child health. I was part of programs in South Africa that were looking at the prevention of mother to child transmission of HIV from HIV positive mothers to their babies. And so um, I think that when you are in a line of work where you can see how your everyday work benefits people, it's really fulfilling because then I, I got the sense that from doing that project, mothers and babies were benefiting from the services that the government was providing. So I'm extremely passionate about public health. I'm also passionate about mentoring young girls um, because, I mean, obviously, I, I'm also a woman and I understand the challenges that young girls in particular go through, especially with my upbringing and some of the challenges that I experienced. So I am a mentor and always available for those young people who are saying that they need some help, they need some guidance to find direction in terms of, you know, what they would like to pursue with their lives. Um, I'm also a speaker and a communicator. Um, so I tend to be very long. I can, I can keep talking because I just love communication, because I am a communicator. Um, I am a conference speaker. In fact, I've been here in uh, Nairobi a couple of times, speaking at different conferences and different churches, because it's an extreme passion of mine to inspire, to motivate, and to uplift people. We know with COVID-19 that there's been a lot of depression. People's businesses have closed down. People are losing hope. People are needing to now change direction. And I think it's you know for those of us who are communicators who are motivators it's really you know important that we step up and we're able to encourage people and offer them you know solutions in terms of how they can move forward with their lives so those are the things that I'm I'm really passionate about 
I think it is very important for, for all of us, uh, young girls in particular, to have a mentor. Sometimes a mentor can come from your own family. Uh, my story really is, has got a lot of influence from my grandmother and from my mother. And so I would say they were the earliest mentors. Mentors are not necessarily professionals, you know, that you don't know who are in business. They can be anyone. Um, they can be an aunt. They could be anyone who make themselves available that whenever you encounter a challenge and, you know, you are not sure how to proceed, you are able to seek for advice and guidance from those people. So I think mentorship is absolutely important because you do need someone who has already gone ahead of you, someone who has already dealt with the challenges that you are still trying to figure out and they can advise you and they can mentor you and they can be there even when you fail, even when you think that things are not working out. So I was very fortunate growing up that even though my life wasn't perfect, but I had very strong women around me who provided that support. I've definitely been in many leadership positions in my professional career, um, working with government, working with the private sector, as well as the non-profit sector. Um, and I think I started playing a leadership role even before I got appointed into formal leadership roles. So one of the things I would say to young girls, to women, is that leadership is not just about a title or a position. You don't wait until you get promoted or you get into a company. You can take leadership at home. As young girls, we often take leadership, you know. Uh, my mother would tell me, uh, before it gets dark, the curtains and the windows must be closed. You need to take the clothes and, you know, from outside and hang them, fold them, bring them inside the house. And when you learn those small things that need to be done and you take leadership to a point where you don't need to be told, someone now knows that Notemba is in charge of this. You never have to worry because when she is at home, the curtains, the windows, the clothes, everything will be sorted. That is leadership. It's about uh, being able to take instructions and guidance and do them in such a way that when you, you have been given that responsibility, no one has to worry about it anymore. Things have not been easy at all. I did talk about you know, the breakdown in terms of my family and how it affected the way that I felt I did not have a sense of belonging. And so I spent my teenage years really just trying to find a place where I belonged. And you, you find yourself in the wrong spaces with the wrong crowds. And that became very difficult for me. But I think uh, the experience of uh, being a Christian and just being um, internalizing those Christian values and principles and and being someone who acknowledges the role that God and faith plays in my life it has really been a game changer for me and I would really say that um, the role of faith is absolutely important because what faith does is that it enables you to believe in yourself when other people don't believe in you. It enables you to believe that things can still work even if you experience you know, difficulties that you were not expecting. So faith for me was just a very, it, it was a game changer. It was an important aspect of how I dealt with the challenges that I experienced. So I am definitely an author. I've just added the title uh, author um, and I am very excited about that. Uh, the title of the book is called Pushing Back the Darkness and the subtitle says when you are tired of accepting the unacceptable. And the, that subtitle comes from my earlier years of growing up and how I felt I accepted things that were really um, not acceptable. You know, when you're trying to fit in and you don't have a sense of belonging, sometimes you just take whatever people give you because you are desperately trying to fit in. Um, you accept a lot of things that, um, that, that are disrespectful to you, you know? Um, I mean, if, if we think about the statistics in terms of women who are abused and women who stay in relationships that are very harmful to them, um, sometimes it's because women feel like they don't have options. If that relationship breaks down, then they are not going to have options in order for them to be able to support themselves financially. So we, we have this tendency to accept things 
that are harmful to us, that are disrespectful to us because we are so desperate. Desperate for money, desperate for relationships, desperate for support, whatever it is. And so pushing back the darkness is about helping um, not just women, but it's about helping us to draw the line. It's about saying to yourself, what is it that I will accept? What is it that I will not accept? And sometimes, you know, we're Africans, we're very friendly communities, we are nice people, and sometimes nice doesn't work. Nice doesn't work. You can be very nice and people can walk all over you, they can disrespect you. And so pushing back the darkness is about drawing those boundaries and helping people along that journey. When you feel uncomfortable with saying no, it's about giving you expression to say that when you have come to a place where you feel something is unacceptable to you, how do you navigate that space? And the beautiful thing about the book is that I become very personal. So I share a lot from my own personal experiences. Um, a lot from my own trauma, you know, growing up. I talk about uh, my husband and how we met and our story, some of the difficulties we faced in marriage and how we were able to draw boundaries that have helped us because we're going to be celebrating 20 years of marriage uh, soon and uh, we've had to do quite a lot of work in order to get to where we are. I've had a lot of highlights in my career. I think uh, one of them was obviously graduating from the University of London. It was a very proud achievement for me. And I got, you know, my first work assignment at the Medical Research Council. And it was a highlight because it's something that I had always wanted to do. And I think it's so important to really write down your dreams, your aspirations, the things that you are trusting God for, because that was something that I had written down, I had prayed about, I had trusted God for. And so when it happened, it was really a highlight for me. The other highlight was, I think, uh, making the transition from being a full-time employee into being a management consultant. I started my own management consulting company called Petra Health Solutions, and I now do management consulting work for different companies. That was definitely a highlight for me. It gave me the opportunity to do projects in many different countries. Um, and the exposure to different countries, different health systems has really been a highlight for me. So I've really enjoyed, I think, my career journey. It's really been very rewarding, but I've taken a lot of risks as well. And I think it's very important to take those risks because the higher the risk, the greater the reward. One thing I wish I knew while I was younger was that I didn't have to try so hard. I think when you have experienced pain, especially rejection, um, as well as losing a sense of belonging, you try very hard. You try very hard to fit in. You become a people pleaser because you are afraid that when you express your uniqueness, people are not going to accept you. So you try and you try so hard to fit in. You pretend to like things you don't like. Um, you pretend to be someone that you are not because you think that you need to be that person in order to be accepted. So I tried very hard and I wish that I had known earlier that I really didn't have to try so hard because there are people out there who are going to love you, who are going to appreciate you and support you for who you are. You really don't have to compromise and to try that hard.